Hello, I'm Sriraj, a Cloud Support Associate here at the AWS office in Northern Virginia. Today I'm going to show you four methods to retrieve data from Amazon CloudWatch logs, specifically when there are large volumes of log data pushed to CloudWatch. Let's get started. First, let's have a look at using subscription filters. Subscription filters are used to access a real-time feed of log events from CloudWatch logs and deliver them to other services such as the Amazon Kinesis Stream, Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose Stream, or AWS Lambda for custom processing, analysis, or loading to other systems. Let me demonstrate an example by using a CloudWatch subscription filter that sends log data to your Lambda function. I'll use the AWS command line interface to explain this method. First, create an AWS identity and access management role with the trusted entity as AWS Lambda. Permissions it will be AWS Lambda basic execution role and then give this role any name. Let's copy the example trust policy from here. Now, create the role CW log user. In the role, attach this role with the policy AWS Lambda basic execution role. Create a Lambda function now. For this example, I'm creating a hello world Lambda function. As you can see, step two has an example Lambda function content. I'm going to use that. This is a very simple Lambda function that displays whatever is pushed to the log group as log events in JSON. I've created the file already. I just need to zip the file using the command Let's create the Lambda function. You have to edit the role ARN with your AWS account number. Now that we have created a Lambda function, let's grant CloudWatch logs permission to execute the Lambda function. Edit this command replacing the placeholder account with your account and the placeholder log group with the log group to process. Note that you can use an existing log group or create a new one by using the API call create log group. As you can see, I'm adding CloudWatch logs permission to the function so that log service can execute it and push the logs from log group test logs to Lambda function. After giving the permissions to Lambda, I'm now creating a subscription filter using the API call put subscription filter. Similar to step five, change the values written in red. Also, you can see that there is no filter pattern, but you can add filter patterns based on your use case. This filter pattern is useful as you can push log to a Lambda function only when a log matches the filter pattern you have set. You can test this by pushing a sample log data to the log group using the CLI. I'm pushing a log data to the test logs log group this command will push a simple log with the timestamp and message. The subscription filter we created is accepting all messages. Let's check out the output. As you can see, the log events I have pushed to test logs, the hello world lambda function will print it. The next method I'll show you is how to retrieve log data by running a query in CloudWatch Log Insights. CloudWatch Logs Insight enable you to interactively search and analyze your log data in Amazon CloudWatch Logs. You can perform queries to help you more efficiently and effectively respond to operational issues. If an issue occurs, you can use CloudWatch Logs Insights to identify potential causes and validate deployed fixes. This is my CloudWatch console. And as you can see, I have a log group API diary where my CloudTrail logs are pushed into CloudWatch. I've configured my AWS CloudTrail such that whenever I make an API call, CloudTrail pushes the data to CloudWatch logs. From the navigation pane, select Insights and select the log group API diary from the search bar. You can modify the time range that you want to receive the log insights from. I'm keeping it as one hour currently. Click on queries option. When you hover over the sample queries button, you can see the different queries. 
For this example, I'm using CloudTrail queries. Select the first sub option, number of log entries by service, event type and region. As you can see, the query for this is stats count by event source, event name, AWS region. Click on apply. Stats calculates aggregate statistics and supports operators such as sum, average, count, min and max. So here we will display the count of all the API calls made by the event name, their source and the AWS region. As you can see, based on the output, you can know which API call was made by based on the source, region and count of the number of times the call was made. You can also create your custom query based on your use case. When you choose the log group, you get the list of discovered fields on the right side. This is useful when you're creating a custom query. You can read more about the query syntax and find sample queries in this public document. The next method is exporting log data to Amazon Simple Storage Service. You can use this method if your use case is to perform custom processing and analysis of your data or if you want to load into other systems. To begin the export process, step 1 is to create an S3 bucket to store the exported log data. Note that you can store the files in S3 and define lifecycle rules so that you can either archive or delete exported files automatically. Log data can take up to 12 hours to become available for export from CloudWatch logs. For real-time analysis and processing, use subscription filters. I'm using the console to export log data. You can also use the AWS CLI. First, let's create the S3 bucket. Open the S3 console and choose create bucket. Let's give an appropriate name. We'll give it a unique name such as api.diary2 and give the region as US West 2. The region you choose must be the region where your CloudWatch log data resides as CloudWatch Logs doesn't support exporting data to S3 in a different region. Choose Create. After creating the bucket, let's create an IAM user and provide full access to S3 and CloudWatch Logs. Open the IAM console. Select Users and then Add User. I'm entering the username as CW Log Export User. Let's give this user programmatic access and AWS management console access. I'll give a custom password and choose the next button. Here, let's give permissions to our user. Choose attach existing policies directly and attach the Amazon S3 full access and CloudWatch logs full access policies to the user. I'll just click next tags, next review and then create user. Step 3 is setting permissions on an Amazon S3 bucket. Let's go back to the Amazon S3 console and choose our bucket api.diary2, select permissions, bucket policy. Let's copy the policy from this document. I'll edit the resource lines and change it to my bucket name api.diary2. Step 4 is creating an export task from the CloudWatch console. Open the CloudWatch console and select log groups. I'll export the API diary log group. Select the log group, choose actions and look for the option export data to Amazon S3. Let's choose that. You can define the time range of log data that you want to export. If you have multiple streams in the log group, you can also specify the log stream that you want to export by choosing this advanced button. If you wrote a bucket policy for a bucket that was in a different account, click another account and mention the AWS account number where the S3 bucket is present. My S3 bucket is in the same account, so I will keep it as the default. Select the name of the bucket from the drop-down. The bucket must be in the same region as your CloudWatch logs. 
Select the S3 bucket prefix as a randomly generated prefix in the bucket policy. Now let's choose export data. You can view the status of the log data that you exported to S3 by choosing actions and then view all exports to S3. As you can see, my export is already completed. This is available in your S3 bucket as a zipped JSON file, which you can now use for your batch data processing or data analysis and so on. The next and the final method is to use get log events or filter log events API call. Note that this method isn't scalable due to the transactions per second limits for the get log events and filter log events API calls. If you experience throttling when performing these actions, use subscription filters instead. For calling an API using the AWS CLI, it's a best practice to visit our public document AWS CLI page. So I'm copying the get logs event action into my browser and searching for it. Open the AWS CLI command reference for this API. In this page, you will find the description for the command, its synopsis, the different option you can use with the command and examples of how to use it. So I'll use SSH to connect back into my instance and enter the following AWS CLI command. You can also add additional values such as start time, end time to give you a filtered value. However, note that currently the get log event API call accepts time only in the epoch format. You must convert your time range to the epoch format. I've already converted my time range to the epoch format and given the value for the parameters start time and end time. As you can see, Compared to the previous example, I get only the logs for the time range entered. Similarly, you can use the filter log events API call. As you can see from this AWS CLI document, filter logs event offers some parameters as get log events, but also a few additional parameters. You can get lo log events for multiple log streams using this API call. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.